Well, good evening, everybody. It's Zero, and welcome back to another episode of History Buff Reacts. And today we are taking a look at how did this entire battalion vanish into thin air? Hmm. This is probably going to be talking about the the American division that disappeared in the I believe it was the Arden Forest in World War One, I, I believe. So I know I might know a little bit about this. We shall see. We won't know until we watch the video. Are you ready? Because I'm ready. Let's go. This episode is brought to you by Rain uh, Shadow Legends. This done now. Good. For many years, a legend grew that during World War I, a battalion charging towards a woodland had vanished into a mysterious mist, and not one soldier had come back. They had simply all disappeared. But what really happened? The Vanished Battalion of Gallipoli. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Gallipoli? Oh. Okay, this is not the one I thought it was. Ooh. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. While the Ottoman Empire was in such turmoil, the Allied forces decided that it would be the right time to launch a devastating and decisive attack against them to cripple their war effort. The Allies came up with a most daring plan that called for a massive amphibious invasion of the strategically important Gallipoli Peninsula near the Ottoman capital of Constantinople. If the Allies could gain supremacy over this region, they would control the vital shipping lanes from the Mediterranean to the Black Sea. It's probably gonna it's probably gonna say it anyway, but um This campaign was probably one of the worst campaigns of World War One. Or the Great War, depending how you want to say it. Um, it was, it was the Allies and the, um, it was Anzac, um, which is Australia, New Zealand. Um, they sent soldiers to Gallipoli because it was easy for them to, well, it wasn't easy for them to access it, but it was their campaign and it went horribly wrong like really really badly he's probably gonna mention it anyway but it was one of the it was genuinely one of the worst campaigns of the great war by a significant margin they would also expose the ottoman capital to naval bombardment by allied battleships on february 19 1915 a large british french task force commenced an attack on the ottoman coastal artillery batteries they were led by the newly commissioned British super dreadnought, the HMS Queen Elizabeth, the flagship of the Mediterranean Expeditionary Force that commanded all of the Allied forces during the Gallipoli campaign. The, big ship. the plan called for the task force to use spotter planes from the British seaplane carrier, the HMS Ark Royal, to help direct a devastating naval barrage. But this plan was severely hampered by bad weather, so the bombardment was largely ineffective in neutralizing the Ottomans' forts in the area. It was not until the end of February, after over a week of intense naval assaults, that many of the Ottoman forts protecting the shoreline had been finally reduced to rubble, and the surrounding sea had been, supposedly, cleared of Ottoman mines. Then a sizable shipment of elite British Royal Marines landed ashore and started to wreak havoc among the Ottoman artillery positions. Nevertheless, by the following month, the Allied assault's progression seemed to stall. So Winston Churchill, who was the first Lord of the Admiralty at the time, pressed for a fresh offensive. He felt that if his attack was implemented, the remaining Ottoman defenses in the area would be quickly overwhelmed, and the Gallipoli Peninsula would fall to the Allies in a matter of days. Churchill even confidently predicted that the nearby Ottoman capital would fall within 14 days, resulting in the Gallipoli campaign finally being won by the Allies, and possibly forcing the Ottomans out of the war for good. Yeah, no, the original offensive was horrendous. Like I said, the bad weather hampered the naval bombardment anyway. But um, the landing forces that they sent, they they were stalled within a couple of days. Um, which is when, yes, Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister for World War II, was actually... Um, an admiral in the Royal Navy, which some of you might not have known. But his idea of a quick offensive 
it it wasn't going to happen. It just straight up was not going to happen because the Ottomans were way further entrenched than anyone could have predicted. British intelligence had also intercepted a German diplomatic telegram that said many of the Ottoman units in the area were seriously short of ammunition and totally demoralized after weeks of fighting. Therefore, on March 18, 1915, the Allies tried to force the issue by sending a large fleet of 18 battleships, along with a number of cruisers and destroyers. What followed was a complete and utter disaster for the Allies, as the Ottomans had secretly laid out fresh sea mines in the area and were willing to put up a much stiffer resistance than expected. With mounting losses, the Allies were forced to order a humiliating retreat, while the Turkish defenses received little significant damage. Therefore, the Allies decided that their only course of action was now to launch a full-scale invasion of the Gallipoli Peninsula with a sizable land army in order to neutralize the many Ottoman coastal batteries. So in late April, a large force consisting of British, Australian, and New Zealand troops landed all along the Gallipoli coastline. The problem was that the Allies had badly underestimated the enemy's ability to fight thinking it would be a relatively easy task to defeat the supposedly inferior mm. Ottoman forces. Oh, it was not. But the Allies never got much further than just beyond the beaches where they had first landed, making very little progress inland once ashore. Consequently, the Allied invasion quickly turned into a bitter and costly stalemate between the two opposing sides. Characterized by demoralizing trench warfare and futile infantry charges against one another. Um, this is actually... This is still, well, it was, it's not, I don't think it's still considered uh, today, but it was during World War II that Australia and New Zealand, simply because of the Gallipoli campaign, did not want to join World War II. Even though they were part of the British Commonwealth, they were very, very reserved about joining World War II on their side, simply because they thought they'd been thrown to be thrown into the meat grinder at Gallipoli. So they thought, well, we're not doing that again. Not, we're not going through this again. It's just, it's madness to think that a full-blown invasion of a well-defended shoreline was ever going to go well. But, that's great war tactics for you. Some of it just straight up did not make any sense. The Norfolk Regiment of the British Army joined in this brutal chaos in the summer of 1915. Okay. Some of the men from this unit were recruited from King George V's royal estate at Sandringham. They were gamekeepers, gardeners, farmhands, and household servants, led by Captain Frank Beck, who, while middle-aged, volunteered to go with his men, feeling a sense of responsibility for them. This regiment okay. had a long and distinguished history, having been formed in 1685, it had won its first formal battle honor during the Seven Years' War from 1756 to 1763. The Norfolk Regiment won further battle honors, including one for the Afghanistan War that took place from 1878 to 1880. And in just the first year of World War I, they were awarded with no less than a further seven battle honors. On August 12, 1915, after weeks of heavy fighting on the shoreline of the Gallipoli Peninsula, around 500 soldiers of the Norfolk Regiment, 5th Battalion, were part of an offensive to drive inland around the Suvla Bay, along with several other Allied units. For many years, a legend grew that the battalion charging towards a woodland had vanished into a mysterious cloud or mist, and not one soldier came back. They had simply all disappeared. Nothing more was ever seen or heard of any of them. They charged into the forest and were lost to sight and sound, Sir Ian Hamilton wrote. Okay. But what really happened to these men? Creepy. The 5th Battalion initially pushed forward down a muddy, waterlogged farm track, making their way into enemy-held territory, when suddenly and without warning, they came under relentless gunfire from a nearby Ottoman machine gun emplacement. This managed to wipe out around one-third of their number in just a matter of seconds. The survivors of this onslaught quickly split into two groups, one headed for cover in a nearby abandoned farm and vineyard, while the others made their way to the safety of some cottages a short distance away. The group at the abandoned farm then started to come under constant sniper fire from the adjacent woodland, and soon dead British soldiers started to pile up all around. In the ensuing chaos, most of the regiment's officers were killed, including its commanding officer, Colonel Sir Horace G.P. Beauchamp. 
War records him. noted that after the engagement, 16 officers and 250 enlisted men of the 5th Battalion were listed as missing, presumed killed or captured in action. A few weeks after this conflict, the newspapers back home in Britain accurately reported this event, including personal testimonies from some of the survivors of this massacre. But as no bodies could be recovered, the 5th became dramatically known as the Vanished Battalion. However, six months later in January of 1916, it was discovered that Captain Coxon from the 5th Battalion had survived the slaughter. It turned out that he had been badly wounded and was captured by Ottoman soldiers the next day. He was now recovering in an enemy hospital in Constantinople. By all accounts, he was being well treated and was on the verge of a full recovery. This raised the hope among friends and family that some of the missing officers and enlisted men of the 5th Battalion might well be alive and were being held as prisoners of war by the Ottoman Turks. When the war finally ended in 1918 and the Allied prisoners were returned home by the defeated enemy, none of them were from the 5th Battalion, apart from Captain Coxon and another officer, 2nd Lieutenant Fox. Despite several further inquiries from the British authorities, the Ottomans categorically stated again and again that all Allied prisoners had been returned and they had no records of any other 5th Battalion soldiers being captured from that area in August of 1915. It was not until the late 1960s that fanciful and incorrect theories started to emerge about the actual fate of these vanished soldiers. Some said that they were captured and brutally executed by the Ottomans, who had a reputation of not keeping prisoners. Another popular theory was put forward by several members of a New Zealand unit that was fighting nearby during that fateful engagement. They claimed to have seen the men of 5th Battalion march down the road towards the enemy, and then suddenly becoming engulfed in a mysterious mist, never to be seen again. Some people even theorized outlandishly that this meant that a supernatural or extraterrestrial force had taken them. The truth of the matter is much more down to earth. As in 1919, just a year after the war had ended, a Commonwealth War Grave Registration Unit was allowed back into the area around Suvla Bay, and they recovered a number of bodies, most being from the Norfolk 5th Battalion. Despite only a few being individually identified, their unit insignia could clearly be seen on their tattered uniforms. In fact, of the missing 266 soldiers of the vanished battalion, 180 were eventually recovered from the area. Most of these were found buried together in a ravine, having been placed there by a local farmer shortly after the battle. This is weird. Like, you'd imagine if a unit got wiped out like that, that there'd be a lot more evidence of it. And only two officers were returned. But yeah, the, the Ottomans did have a reputation of not taking prisoners, so that doesn't help anyway. But even even if they were executed, surely there'd be plenty of evidence of it. The mysterious mist. I mean, extraterrestrials. I no, I I don't put any stock in that. Why why would they come to a single? <laughs> why would they come to a single area and steal all the soldiers? That makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, I, th I think they better just. I think they were just best personally killed. To be honest, I think they were just killed. As for the Gallipoli campaign itself, it dragged on for nearly a year after the Allies finally gave up and withdrew from the peninsula on January 9th, 1916. Yeah, you know that whole thing about it being a, like I said, about it being a complete disaster. It wasn't one battle. It, it lasted a long time, a very long time. It was widely seen as an Allied defeat, having achieved none of its original goals. It resulted in 302,000 Allied troops killed, wounded, captured, or missing. The Ottomans suffered around 250,000 casualties. The chief architect and avid supporter of the whole campaign, First Lord of the Admiralty Winston Churchill, was widely blamed for the campaign's failings. Though later, the Dardanelles Commission, which was organized to investigate the disastrous Gallipoli campaign, concluded that he was in no way personally responsible or to blame for the campaign's many shortcomings. Hmm. Being the sole architect and the chief of the naval forces at the Gallipoli campaign, uh, I can't even speak, campaign, and he was found to be not responsible for it. 
Yeah, something doesn't seem quite right there. This, yeah, I genuinely thought this was going to be about the Lost Battalion, which was the one from the Arden Forest, the American division in Ar the Arden Forest. I never heard of this one. Norfolk Regiment. I'm going to have to look into this a little bit more, because that's that's weird. It's interesting, but very weird. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to do some more research into this. But yeah, another good simple history video. I'm liking these weird stories that they're doing recently, actually. I'm quite enjoying them. Oh, I'm going to have to do some reacts and reviews to a few more, I believe.